Hello everyone, this is Raven and welcome to my channel. Today we will be talking about making gaming computers for under $200. This one here cost $199 including shipping. And then this one here cost about $170 including shipping. And this one here even came with a keyboard and a mouse in that price. With the other one, I already had a spare keyboard that I got for a dollar at a thrift store and cleaned. So, can you build a gaming computer for under $200? Yeah, you can do it pretty easily. And it's been done before many times. So what makes these different? Well, usually when people build budget gaming computers for under $200, they take an old office PC and slap a graphics card in and they almost always use the Dell Optiplex. And I personally think that's a mistake. Yes, I did start out with old office PCs, and yes, I did put graphics cards in them, but what makes these different than those Dell Optiplexes or none of those people usually go with is that all the hardware in these is standard ATX. So it's a standard ATX case, it's um, a standard ATX power supply. It's a standard ATX motherboard. You don't have to deal with that proprietary nonsense, even though these are made by HP, which usually makes office PCs that are filled with proprietary nonsense. Now, there are a few that catches here. On this model here, and on another model I'm going to talk about in a minute, they actually drill the power supply mounting holes upside down. So if you mount a power supply in it, it's going to be venting air out the top. So you need to um, drill three extra holes just to mount the power supply in the right way around. So the fan is facing down and it sucks the air out. On this one here, that's not an issue. So the first one is the HP ProDesk 400 G3. This is a 6th gen Intel i5, so it's the i5-6600. It's a quad-core CPU that runs fairly well. It's fairly quick. And then this one here is the i5-4950, which is about the same speed. It runs pretty much just as well as the other one, except it is 4th gen Intel, so it supports DDR3 memory as opposed to DDR5 memory. Now, I got this for like 50 bucks, not including the shipping, but including the shipping it was like $80, and that is another thing that I see YouTubers do all the time when they make these budget builds, is they include the cost, but they never include the shipping. They hardly ever do, which I think is just really misrepresenting the cost of, of their builds. So the great thing about these is you can easily upgrade them. You can easily take the parts out and put them in a nicer case like the Fractal Mesh of IC or whatever case you choose. Um, they are standard MATX cases for the most part. They do have some weird um, HP things going on. Like, if you take the motherboards out, stick them in another case, it's going to say that the USB port is unconnected. But I made a video to show you how to fix that just by grounding out one of the pins. It's pretty easy. And then that just makes it into a standard ATX board. So they both include Wi-Fi, they both have 500 watt power supplies from EVGA. I got the power supply brand new from Amazon for under $30. So you can see it's just a standard ATX power supply there. And got a Samsung EVA 250GB SSD. And in this one, I put the Radeon HD. 6950 in it, the one gigabyte version. I meant to order the two gigabyte version. You can get those on eBay 
fairly cheap for about 50 bucks. Um, I would never pay more than that. So that's the thing. If you're building a gaming computer for under $200, you pretty much only have about $50 to spend on a GPU. Um, so the best GPUs I could find for 50 bucks are the HD 6950 made by AMD, or in this one, I put the GTX 650 Ti 2GB version, and that was about $50, and you can easily find both those cards pretty much at any time for $50 or less, or somewhere around there. And you can play a lot of modern games on them at 720p, and a lot of older games on higher settings, but um, mostly with these two cards, you'll be limited to low settings, 720p, but you'll get at least console-like frame rates. Now, both of these cases have pretty much an identical layout on the inside. And if you're installing a longer GPU like this one, it's a bit of a pain. I actually had to break off one of these little metal things to get it to fit in there right with the power cables. But if you're mounting a shorter GPU in here, it's really easy and there's no issue. Another thing I had to do with a longer GPU, in this particular one, since the SATA cables were underneath it, I had to use right angle adapters. But those are pretty cheap. And, I mean, for a computer that costs $170, you can play a lot of games on it at low settings. It runs fairly well. Now I'm just going to show you the other one running because they're about the same as far as the performance. The one that cost $199 is a little bit better, so that's the one we're going to be looking at. This one here, um, because it has that one, one gigabyte VRAM limit, it's not quite as good, and you can't play as many games on it. So for testing out games, I will be using an external USB 2. I mean USB 3 drive. It's an ADATA enclosure with a PNY 500 gigabyte SSD in it because I don't feel like actually spending the time installing games on this. When you're testing games out, this is just a way faster way to do it. Another huge benefit of having your games on an external drive, since I have a desktop and a laptop that I game on, if you put your games on an external drive, you can easily switch between the desktop and the laptop to game on without having to have the games installed twice or update the games twice. It's just quite handy that way. The first game that we're going to look at is Bright Memory Infinite. It's a reasonably graphical demanding game and I have it set to 720p low settings and we'll get frame rates between 45 and 60 FPS. So it's, it's playable at 720p even though it's a fairly recent graphical demanding game. And another thing that's great about these computers that's kind of unique about a lot of HP computers, and that's that even though I don't have speakers plugged in, they have an internal speaker that doesn't just beep like it does on other computers. They can actually route the audio through it from the sound card, so the whole computer functions like a speaker. It's pretty cool. All right, here goes. So we're getting 45 FPS right now. Yeah. And I was set to Japanese for some reason. There's a Japanese game. I think it's Japanese, it might be Chinese. Not good with Asian languages, I'll be honest.
Uh, I'd say for a computer that costs under $200, including shipping costs, this isn't half bad. Could you possibly build something better? Sure, but if you're ordering parts online, could you build something better? Hmm, I don't think so. I think this is about the best you can get for this price if you're ordering parts online right now at the time I ordered these parts. <clears throat> Next up, we're going to look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And this is set to 720p low settings. And we're getting pretty consistent frame rates at slightly above 30 FPS. So for this game, I mean, it's playable at these frame rates. Is it ideal? No, but it's not stuttery and it's fairly playable. Other games like Borderlands 3 I couldn't even get to run, and I think that's a graphics card driver issue more than a graphics card issue. And that's something you'll run into if you're using old used GPUs that only cost $50 or less from eBay, is that um, they're not supported anymore, so they don't make new drivers for them. Even if they're capable of running the games, they can't. In fact, the HD Sixty nine fifty could run Borderlands three, but this one I can't get to run it for some reason. So it's kind of hit and miss with these older cards. It's a capybara. That's a big one. Next up, we'll try out The Witcher three and see how it runs. And at 720p, we're getting pretty decent frame rates. About the same as we were on Bright Memory Infinite. So we're getting 48 frames per second to 55-ish. So very playable frame rates. This game is actually running smoother than it was on my GTX 1060 for some reason. But that was at ultra settings, so... Yeah, overall it's a playable experience, I would say. So in conclusion, can you build a gaming computer from stuff you can just order online for under $200? Yeah, you can. Um, this one just costs $1.99, including shipping. This one was only like... 170 and these computers, the HP 400 um, G2 and G3, this is the G3, are very easily available online for very cheap. And the HP 280 G1 and G2, this is the G1, um, are pretty cheap as well, but they're not as easily available. So if you're going this route, I would probably go for the HP ProDesk 400 G3. I wouldn't go for the G2 variant, which is almost identical to this one here, because it's a 4th gen Intel CPU, and that limits you to DDR3 RAM instead of DDR4 RAM. Well, DDR3 is usually less expensive right now. DDR4 is way more versatile. I could take the RAM out of this and put it in a computer that's brand new, and it would pretty much work. So um, it gives you a lot more upgrade options if you go with the 6th gen variant of this, which you can get for just slightly more money. Now, we established that you can make gaming computers for under $200, but the real question is, should you? I mean, you're pretty much limited to 720p gaming if you want to play anything that's near a modern title, like The Witcher. I mean, The Witcher 3 is quite old at this point. Even um, Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is kind of old at this point. Um, 
So if you're playing games that are a few years old at 720p, sure, fine. Um, otherwise, uh, I would not build either of these computers. I would not build a gaming computer for under $200. In fact, um, if I just spent like 50 more dollars on a GPU and waited a little bit till the prices drop, from the GPU shortage, I could stick a GTX 960 4GB in this and get like three times the performance out of it than what the um, the GTX 650 2GB is, is doing for me. Um, but is this a good starting point if you only have $200 to spend and you are in a hurry and need something right now? Uh, I I guess so, but it has limitations. You're not going to be able to stick an M.2 drive into this. You're limited to SATA, which is kind of slow. Um, so what I would advise instead is to make sure you buy something that is at least new enough to run Windows 11 on, so I wouldn't get anything older than an 8th gen Intel CPU. And with that, you're going to get M.2 support, and that's going to be way faster boot times, way faster load times. And for just $100 or $200 more, you can build a much better computer. This computer here is my main computer, and that one only costs me like $500, and it can run pretty much any modern game without any issue. So, um... I actually started out with an old Acer computer that was a pre-built, and I just gradually upgraded it until I have that computer. And the original computer only cost me $240. And I still have the same processor from that Acer, the same memory, and the same hard drive, but it runs great, runs everything I could use on it. So, um, yeah, you can build a gaming computer for less than $200. Should you? No. No, you shouldn't. You should invest that $200 in buying newer hardware. Now, if you could get a hold of these for cheaper than that, like for a local deal, like from a thrift store or something, for much less money, and, and if you can get it locally, you don't have to deal with the shipping costs, then would it be worth it? Yeah. Because um, if you could build this for, let's say, $100 or less, sure, it's totally worth it. But any more money than that, I would not spend. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, then say what you didn't like about it in the comment section below. Um, I might be making more videos like this in the future. Anyway, have a great day. Bye now.